Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brothers, sisters, and respected elders. <coughs> Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. A'udhu billah, rabbi jalni muqeemu salati wa min durriyati rabbana wa taqabbal dua, rabbana akfirli wa li walidaya wa lil mu'minina yawma yaqumul hisab. Amma ba'du. Inni usi nafsi wa iyaakum bi taqwa Allah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. All praise is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to be here on this beautiful Jummah, being in the masjid. We could be anywhere doing anything, but alhamdulillah, He chose for us to be here, worshipping Him, remembering Him with our fellow believers. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, in today's khutbah, I would like to discuss the concept of friendship and what friendship means in the Islamic tradition. We will look at the characteristics that make a good friend. And we should look and we will look for and we will look at what we should look for in a good friend inshallah. And we will also reflect on how we should deal with our friends when our relationships are being tested. In his interactions with the companions our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam modeled for us what true friendship was all about. Good companionship, a good suhbah is stressed very highly in our religion and our beloved Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us many pieces of advice about friendship. So first of all, what is friendship? It was narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, The Muslim is the one from whose tongue and hand the people are safe. And the believer is the one from whom the people's lives and wealth are safe. Just to repeat, the Muslim is the one from whose tongue and hand the people are safe. And the believer is the one from, whose, from, whose, from whom the people's lives and wealth are safe. This means that if we look at our friends, we know that our friends are not going to backbite us or gossip about us or make fun of us when we leave their circles. And when we are in their presence, we know that we don't have to worry about them physically hurting us or insulting us. We know that we are safe in our friends' company. We don't have to fe fear them. We don't have to feel uncomfortable when we are with them. If we leave anything valuable behind by mistake, we know that our friends will safeguard our property for us. We don't ever have to distrust our friends or question their honesty. If I leave a wallet full of cash in my friend's car, I know that he will return my wallet to me and it'll still be full of cash. This is what we're looking for in our friends. Friendship is full of safety. Friendship means safety. Friendship means trust. Friendship means honesty. This is what we should be looking for when we're trying to make friendships, inshallah. Of course, even acquaintances and enemies are safe from a Muslim's tongue and hand. But our friends should be extra vulnerable with one another. We should be able to rely on each other. We should be able to blindly trust each other. So what should we look for in a friend? About the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Az-Zukhruf, Ayah 67, Friends on the day will be enemies one to another, except al-muttaqoon, those who are pious. Friends on the day will be enemies one to another, except al-muttaqoon, those who are pious. So look for pious friends. Therefore, when we make friends, we should seek people who are pious, because people who are pious don't just remain our friends in this life, but they remain our friends in the hereafter also. When it comes to every decision we make in this life, we should have our akhira glasses on. That means we should look at everything through the lens of the hereafter. It's not just about this world, it's also about what's coming next, inshallah. There is nothing worse than a stingy Muslim. But when it comes to our time, it is okay to be a little bit stingy. 
We have such a limited amount of this precious commodity, and it gets less and less every day. We shouldn't be giving, our way, we shouldn't be giving away our time to just anyone. It is perfectly acceptable to look at ourselves and to ask ourselves, will this friendship benefit me? We should be polite and cordial and kind with everyone. But we don't need to make everyone our deepest and closest friends. We should seek out the company of the pious when it comes to our most meaningful friendships. If our friends are people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek to please Him, then we can rest assured knowing that they will fulfill our rights. It is reported in Bukhari that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a good friend and a bad friend are like a perfume seller and a blacksmith. The perfume seller might give you some perfume as a gift, or you might buy some from him, or at the least, you might smell its fragrance. As for the blacksmith, he might singe your clothes, and at the very least, you will breathe in the fumes of the furnace. SubhanAllah. We'll repeat that one more time. A good friend and a bad friend are like a perfume seller and a blacksmith. The perfume seller might give you some perfume as a gift, or you might buy some from him, or at the very least, you might smell its fragrance. As for the blacksmith, he might singe your clothes, and at the very least, you will breathe in the fumes from the furnace. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us here that one way or another we are going to be affected by our company. Even if we don't get directly harmed or badly influenced, we will for sure have some kind of negative experience. With good friends, we have the potential to benefit from their company, either by what they give us or by what we take from them. But at the very least, we will have some kind of positive experience just by being around their presence. We all need to assess our individual relationships with our friends. We need to ask ourselves, are our friends exposing us to sweet perfume or are they exposing us to hot coal? And we need to ask ourselves, am I spreading a good scent or am I spreading a bitter smoke when I am with my friends? There is a saying in English, he that lies with dogs shall rise up with fleas. He that lies with dogs shall rise up with fleas. What does this mean? It means that detrimental company will adversely affect you. Don't ever think that you're better than your friends. You are who your friends are. Akulu koli hada wa astaghfirullahi li wa lakum. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Just to shift gears a little bit How do we respond when our friendships are being tested? When things aren't going right in our friendships How do we react? It has been said that 80% of all life's tests Will be learning how to deal with other people how do you deal, how do we deal with our friends when they are hurting us? How do we deal with our friends when they are hurting? Our friends have many rights over us and it is important that we take our responsibilities towards them seriously. In a hadith related in Bukhari, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, the parable of the believers in their affection, mercy and compassion for each other is that of a body. When any limb aches, the whole body is affected with sleeplessness and fever. This means that when our friends are hurting, we hurt with them. 
We have care and concern and compassion for them. We are not aloof or distant when our closest friends are going through trials and tribulations. The Sunnah teaches us to visit our friends when they are sick, to feed them when they are hungry, and to share our wealth with them when they are in need. We pray for them when they are being tested. But what about when our friends hurt us? When their actions confuse us and cause us to feel alone and alienated? The sunnah is to have husnudan, a beautiful opinion of one another. We should always make 70 excuses for each other. The Muslim looks to pardon, whereas shaitan is quick to condemn. The Prophet ﷺ said in an authentic hadith, also related in Bukhari, do not hate each other, do not envy each other, do not turn away from each other, but rather be servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as brothers. It is not lawful for a Muslim to boycott his brother for more than three days. SubhanAllah. Do not hate each other, do not envy each other, do not turn away from each other, but rather be servants of Allah as brothers. It is not lawful for a Muslim to boycott his brother for more than three days. And we know that this is not just talking about men, this also includes our sisters. SubhanAllah, this is beautiful. We need to take this advice to, in the 21st century. So many of us are just cutting each other off. Our Prophet says right here, it is not lawful for a Muslim to boycott his brother for more than three days. You have three days to, get, to have your space, but then our Prophet is telling us, fix it. We're only as strong as our weakest link. We need to be together, we need to be united. If it is undeniable that a friend has wronged us, we try to have honest and civil conversations with them in private in order to clear the air. If our best attempts at peacemaking don't work, we leave judgment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make sure that our former friends are at least protected from our tongues. We say here former friends because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu also taught us in a hadith, the believer isn't stung from the same hole twice. The believer isn't stung from the same hole twice. So don't be in an abusive relationship. But still, we have, the same, we have the same saying in English also. Once bitten, twice shy. Once bitten, twice shy. No matter how hurt or disappointed we are, we don't use that pain to ever slander or backbite our former friends. <clears throat> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be those types of friends who are counted amongst the pious. May we be those friends who are like the perfume sellers. May we be those friends whose tongues and hands others are protected from, inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with those friends whom he counts amongst his own friends on the Day of Judgment. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد أبدك رسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكينا عذاب النار أستغفر الله لي ولكم إقامة الصلاة